There's nothing quite like some of that Thursday night magic for high school football in Oregon. You get all the regular excitement of a Friday with a little extra magic to sprinkle on top. Chaos and unforeseen outcomes, almost a given. You throw in a little dash of wildness at the end and you couldn't ask for a better night of football in Oregon. 15 seconds left to go. It's all gonna come down potentially this and Olietti drops the ball, has to run. Finds a big hole and a gap, and he fumbles the ball. Felix Olietti fumbles the ball. It's a scramble to the end, two seconds left. Ball's recovered with one second on the clock remaining. Now, Friday Night Blitz on KEZI 9 News. Well, welcome into week five of Friday Night Blitz on a Thursday. Yeah, I know it's a little bit strange, but just bear with me. I'm Brett Taylor. Running solo tonight on the show while our sports director, Cameron Derby, continues to regain his voice. We're hopeful that we'll be able to have him back on the desk for the show next Friday. But until then, a wild Thursday night of action on football all across the state. With that Oregon-Michigan State game set for Friday, several teams in our area decided, hey, let's play some football on a Thursday. Why not? These Thursday night editions always bringing a little extra craziness, not only in the games, but in the standings as well. A big shakeup happening in the Midwestern League is where we're going to kick things off tonight. Unranked Churchill visiting number three Thurston. A huge Midwestern League matchup. The Lancers up 24-7 to to start this game. Closing in on halftime, the Lancers trying to get more and instead get picked off by Kyle Miller. That gives Thurston some great field position and allows Noah Blair to try and make that magic happen before the half. He's scrambling, he's running, he's trying to make something happen. The ball is batted and then it's picked off right back to Brady Bruschi with the interception. It stays 24-7 at the half. So the Colts having to get going fast, trying to rally the troops. But the Lancers eating up six minutes in the third quarter. The Lancers throwing a heavy dose of the Seville Pazzi into the mix. Moments later, it's Pazzi punches it in and Thurston never recovers. The Lancer crowd Celebrating the dub victory in formation for Churchill. One of the biggest updates we've seen in a long while as Thurston goes down to Churchill. 32 to 13, the final score. Lancer head coach Lane Coffin after the game. Take a listen. I dig our kids, man. They play hard. Um, really uh, happy for them. Um, they work hard. And uh, I think they, they put in the time and the effort. Uh, I feel good. But there's more to do. Lots of good teams ahead of us. So. A lot more work, but I'm happy for our kids. Well, let's head back to Eugene. North Eugene, to be exact, the Highlanders hosting Roseburg. And there's nothing more American than Friday night football on a Thursday. No North students all in pink for that October. Of course, breast cancer awareness. The Highlanders want to take the deep shot early, airing it out. But McLean Stedman says, no, 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 sir. Great pass defense. Later in the first, the pass opens up. It's Brody Gilman to Tayshawn. Tara Sun, what a snag, and North goes up by a touchdown with 4.30 left in the first. Ensuing possession, Luke Robbins, going to be back to throw after the nice little celebration. Hand in his face and picked off by Grady, kick down. He also had a fumble recovery early in the quarter. A great night for kick down and great field position for the Highlanders as they cash in. Amos Bowers, touchdown score. North goes up by two dubs. And it goes on to win the game. In a close one, though, Roseburg fought to the end. The final score, 28-21. That's a four-game winning streak. And North gets Churchill next. Ain't no party like a South party, especially in the House of the Axe. Welcoming in Eagle Point to South Eugene. The drums banging loud in the land of the Axe. The Eagles and Axe both winless thus far this season. That's going to change after Thursday. Late second quarter, Felix Olietti keeps it on the QB keeper. Falls into the end zone and the Axe lead eight to nothing at halftime. And then disaster striking in the third. Pin deep, it's Oscar Higby, the booming high snap out through the end of the end zone. Uh oh, that's a safety. Eagles get on the board following offensive possession. Payne Smith, big gaping hole up the middle. And just like that, the Eagles have themselves the first lead of their night. But it only gets worse from there for the Axe. Next Eagles drive, Smith. Bouncing, bobbing, weaving his way through traffic. Green grass in front of him and the stiff arm for a good extra measure. A 40-yard strike and the lead. Eagles now lead by eight. So the Axe down to the very last second. Olietti dump off pass to Henry Fawcett. Not close enough. Eagles pick up their first win of the season in comeback fashion. The final 16-8 Eagle point. So 
Let's take a look now at the Midwestern League after all of these football matchups. Some movement in the standings as Churchill, for the moment, takes sole possession of first place with that big win over Thurston, their first win over the Colts since the 2018 season. Willamette could jump into second place with a win on Friday. They're in fourth at the moment. And North Eugene and Thurston technically tied for third at 4-1 and one right now in league play. These are all the league standings. But we do have a quick shout-out as well for another week and another blowout for the Sheldon Irish. 69-3 over North Salem. My goodness, what is this Sheldon Irish team on? They have been phenomenal. It's the second consecutive game that the Irish have scored at least 65 in their defense, allowing just 6.6 points per game. That's impressive right there. Down to 3A, 4-0 Cottage Grove hosting Sisters, looking to stay undefeated. We move to the first quarter. Outlaws looking to strike. Hunter Bronson off the play action, goes deep. Hudson Beckwith all alone, hit the jet boosters, and bye-bye. 72 yards to the house, a big strike for Sisters to kick off this game. They're up 7 to nothing. That quiets the crowd early at Don King Field. And then later in the first, the Outlaws driving again. This time it's Spencer Davis gets loose, a little shake and bake down the sideline, and he puts Sisters back into the red zone with that late hit penalty. That'll put them even closer. Flip sides to start the second. Outlaws trying to extend their lead. Fourth and goal, Lions defense holding strong. Jake Thurkle blows it up in the backfield. Big stand for the Lions. Later in the second, Sisters in position again. This time it's Kale Mock able to get the job done and into the end zone. So Sisters would be up 14 to nothing in the second. They would be 14 to nothing at half, but the Lions would come roaring back in the second half. They remain unbeaten the final 28 to 19. The Crestwell Bulldogs hosting Madras. The White Buffaloes, we pick things up in the second half. Crestwell up 20 to nothing at this point. Madras in position though to finally get on the board. Jason Rodriguez punches it in for two yards out and that's a touchdown for the White Buffaloes. Now a 20 to six game. And then we've got the Bulldog, the mascot. Didn't like that one, but it's okay. Madras trying to climb back into this one. Logan Kepler not having that though. Blowing it up in the backfield, tough sledding for the Madras offense. And then desperation time for the White Buffaloes. Bentley Stockton takes a deep shot down looking for Gavin Williams, but can't connect. That would essentially do it. Crestwell would kill the clock and the Bulldogs take this one, the final 20 to six. 